so good morning everyone i hope you're well and good right now so today we are going to discuss our new topic which is about the japanese period since we already discussed about the spanish period in the year 1521 to 1898 and also about the american period in the year of 1900 to 1942 so now this year Japanese period 1941 to 1945 So during the Japanese period the Philippine literature came into a halt the use of English language was forbidden and the use of the Filipino language was mandated under the Japanese rule. And then, for some this was a problem but the most writers, it was a blessing in disguise. Almost all newspapers were stopped except forum. And then, during Japanese period, Filipino literature, literature was given a break during this period, many wrote plays, poems, short stories, and etc. And then, during Japanese periods, we have forms. We have number one, poetry. Number two, fiction. So now, let's discuss first the poetry. When we say poetry, the common theme of the common theme of mass poems during Japanese occupation was nationalism country, love and life in the various faith, religion, and the arts. And then fiction, the field of the short story, while then during Japanese occupation, many wrote, many wrote short story. So when we say fiction, it is a, this is not a real story. Minsan, haka-haka lang ito. Hindi ito totoong story. Hindi ito nanggagaling sa totoong buhay ng isang tao. So, those are, or these are, the topics and themes were often about life in the province. And the number T, when we say drama, Drama experiences a full during the Japanese period because movie houses showing American films were closed. The big movie houses just made to show stage shows. Many of the plays were reproduction of English plays to Tagalog. And then, number four, newspaper. So, when we say newspaper, writing that come out during the period were journalistic in nature. Writers felt suppressed but slowly. The spirit of nationalism started to seep into their consciousness while some continued to write the majority of a better climate to publish their works. Essays Essays were composed to glorify the Filipinos at the same time to figuratively attract the Japanese. So, literature of the Philippines today. So, this is now, so we are now in the 21st century. So, as what we have observed, we had a lot of technology. So, napapansin natin ngayon, marami na tayong ginagamit. Unlike before, wala silang ibang ginamit, kundi um, magsulat, ang magsulat. Unlike ngayon, um, pa rin natin gamitin yung mga technology para mas mapadali ang ating mga Gawain. If ever you want to write um, some poems or you want to express your ideas or your feelings through poems, so ano, ginagamit mo yung mga multimedia para mas mapadali ito at mas maging clear ito sa mata ng mga mambabasa. So, 21st century literature. In the 21st century Philippines, there are a lot of literary innovations that are adapted and created by Filipino. So, ngayon na, yun na yung sinasabi ko na this century, tayong lahat or dito sa Pilipinas, marami ang mga, mga improvement, marami ang 
progra ang progress kasi nga marami ang marami ang nagagawa o marami ang ang naimbento ng mga Pilipino. Nowadays, even those who do not have any sign in literary back their own way using the freedom though that they have to write and to express. There are a lot new form of basic genres of literature that's proving how far the literature in the Philippines has gone and how far it all it will all from here. So we have the colonial authors and works of Philippine national artists in literature. So number one is Idette El Tiempo, 1999. So she was born in April 22, 1919. So and died in August 21, 2011. So Idette Tiempo, she is a poet, fictionist, teacher, and literary critic. She is one of the finest Filipino writers in English whose work are characterized by a remarkable fusion of style and, sub and substance, of cra craftsmanship and insight. She was born on April 22, 1919 in Bayumbong, Nueva Vizcaya. Her forms are intricate verbal transfigurations and significant experiences as revealed in two of her much anthologized pieces, The Little Mormoset and Bonsai. As fictionist, Tiempo is a morally profound. Her language has been marked as descriptive but unburdened by scrupulous detailing. She is an influential tradition in Philippine literature in English. Together with her late husband, Edalberto K. Tiempo, she founded and directed the Siliman National Writers Workshop in Domagate City, which has produced some of the country's best writers. So, Tiempo published works include and the novel, A Blade of Fern, during 1978, The Narrative Cost, 1979, and then The Allen Corn, 1992, The Poetry Collection, The Tracks of Babylon, and Other Poems, during 1966, and then The Charmers, Box, and Other Poems, during 1993, and then The Short Story Collection by Joshua and the Other Story, it was during 1964. So the second one, the second authors was Bienvenido Lombera, Literature in 20, 2006. So Bienvenido Lombera is a poet, literatist, and scholar. And scholar. As a poet, he introduced to Tagalog literature what is now known as Bagay Poetry. A landmark aesthetic tendency that has helped to change the vernacular poet tradi poetic tradition. He is the author of the following works: Likhang Dakila, and Likhang Dila, rather, Likhang Diwa poems in Filipino and English during 1993, Balaybay, Mga Tulang Lunot at Banib Manibalang during 2002, Sa Sariling Bayan, Apat na Dulang May Musika 2004, Agonias. Sa Asyanda Lucita, Luisita, Pakikiramay during 2004. As a liberist for the tales of Manovo and Ravahari, he pointed the creative fusion of the fine arts and popular imagination. As a scholar, his major books include the following. Tagalog Poetry, 1970 to 1898, Tradition and Influences in the Development, Philippine Literature, A History and Anthology, Revolutions, Essays in the Philippine Literature, Writing the Nation, Pagkaakda ng Bansa. So the third one, Nestor Vicente Magdali Gonzalez, 1997, so she was born, um, he was born rather, on September 8, 1915, and then died November 28, 1999. So, Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez, better known as NVM Gonzalez. He was a fictionist, easiest, poet, and teacher articulated the Filipino spirit in rural, urban, and landscape. 
Among the many recognition, he won the first Commonwealth Literary Contest in 1940, received the Public Cultural Heritage Award in 1960, and the Gawad CCP Para Sa Sining in 1990. The awards attest to his triumph in appropriating the English language to express, reflect, and shape Philippine culture and the Philippine sensibility. He became UP International Writer in Residence and a member of Board and of Advisors of the UP Creative Writing Center. In 1987, UP conferred, conferred on him the Doctor of Human Letters, Honoris Causa, its highest academic recognition. The major works of NBM Gonzalez include the following. So, number one, The Winds of April, Seven Hills Away, Children of the of the Ash Covered Looms and the Other Stories, The Bamboo Dancers, Look Stranger, On This Island Now, Mindoro and Beyond, 21 Stories, The Bread of the Salt and the Other Stories, Work in the Mountain, The Novel of Justice, Selected essays in the year 1968 to 1994, A Grammar of Dreams and the Other Stories. So now, we have also Virgilio S. Almario during 2003. Virgilio S. Almario, also known as Rayo Alma. She is a poet, literary historian, and critic who, who has revived and reinvented traditional Filipino poetic form, even as he championed modernist poetics. In, 13, in 34 years, he was published 12 books of poetry, which include the seminal Machination and Peregrination and the landmark trilogy, trilogy Doctrinang Anak Pawis, Mga Retrato and Recuerdo at and Muli, Sa Kandungan ng Lupa, in these works, his poetic voice soared from the lyrical to the satirical to the epic, from the dramatic to the incantatory in his often severe examination of the self and the society. He has also redefined how the Filipino po poetry Filipino poetry is viewed and paved the way of the discussion of the same in his 10 books of criticism and ontologies, among which are Ang Makata ng Panahon ng Makina, Balagtisismo versus Modernismo, Walong Dekada ng Makabagong Tula, Pilipino, Mutyang Dilim, and Barlaan at Josapat. So many Filipino writers have come under his wing in literary workshop he founded the galleon and the art and tula or or ghat and then the linangan ng imahen rhetorica and anyo lera and then he was also long been involved with children's literature through the akrat adarna series published by the children communication center he has been a constant presence as well as in national writing workshop and galvanized member writers as chairman emeritus of the Onion and the Manunulat sa Pilipinas. He headed the National Commission for Culture and the Arts as executive director from the year 1998 to 2001. It is able entering the commission towards its goals. But more than anything else, what Almario accomplished was that he put a pace to the Filipino writers in the count, writer in the country, one strong face determinedly welding a pen into untruths, hypocrisy, injustice, among others. We have here also Serelio F. Bautista in the year 2014. So Serelio F. Bautista, he was a poet, Perfectionist also, an easiest with exceptional achievements and significant contribution to the development of the country's literary arts. He was acknowledged by peers and critics and the nation of large and the as the foremost writer of his generation. 
Throughout his career that spanned more than four decades, he was established a reputation for fine and profound artistry. His books, lectures, poetry readings, and creative writings workshop continue to influence his peers and generations of the young writers. As a way of bringing poetry and fiction closer to the people who otherwise would not have the opportunity to develop their creative talent. So Bautista has been holding regular funded and unfunded workshop throughout the country. In his campus lecture circuits, Bautista has updated students and students writers on literary developments and techniques. So as a teacher of literature, Bautista has realized that the classroom is an important training ground for Filipino writers. In De La Salle, in the, in De La Salle University, he was instrumental in the form formation of the Benvenido Santos Creative Writing Center. He was also the moving spirit behind the founding of the Philippine Literary Arts Council in 1981, the Iliga National Writers Workshop in 1993, and then the Baguio Writers Group. Thus, Bautista continued to contribute to the development of Philippine literature as a writer through his significant body of works as a literary as a teacher through his discovery and encouragement of young writers in workshop and lectures as a critic through his essay that provide insight into the craft of writing and correctives to misconception about art major works summer sense in the year 1963 words and battlefields in the year 1998 and then the Trilogy of St. Lazarus 2001, and then Galaw ng Ansoj, the year 2003. So now, let's proceed to Nick Joaquin, 1976. He was born on May 4, 1917, and then died in April 29, 2004. So Nick Joaquin, is regarded by many as the most distinguished Filipino writer in English writing so varedly and so well about many aspects of the Filipino. Nick Joaquin has also enriched the English language with critics coining Jacquinesque to describe his Baroque Spanish playboard English or his reinvention of English based on Filipinism. Aside from his handling of language, Benvenido Lombera writes that Nick Joaquin's significance in Philippine literature involved his exploration of the Philippine colonial past under Spain and his probing into, into the psychology and social changes as seen by the young. As exemplified in stories such as Doña Jeromina, Candidus, Apocalypse, and the other of the Mel's Chidak, Nick Joaquin has written plays, novels, poems, short stories, essays, including reportage and journalism. As a journalist, Nick Joaquin uses the name of De Guerra Cajano de Manila, but whether he is writing literature or journalism, fellow national artist Francisco Arzelania opens that it is always of high skill and quality. So, among his voluminous works are The Woman Who Had Two no no Navels, a portrait of the artist as Filipino, Manila, My Manila, A History for the Young, The Ballad of the Five Battles, Rizal in Saga, Almanac from Manil Manilenos, Cave and Shadows, Nick Joaquin died in April 29, 2004. Now we have also here C.F. Sanyal Jose, year 2000 war. C.F. Sanyal Jose's writings since the late 16, late 60, in the years of 60s, when taken collectively can best be described as epic. It shares volume, shares volume, put him on the forefront of the Philippines writing in English, but ultimately, it is the consistent epistles of the aspiration of the Filipino for national sovereignty and social justice that guarantees the value of his 
of his orig or orig in the five novel masterpiece, the Rosalie saga consisting the part pretenders, three my brothers, and the executioner, mass, and pawn. He captured the sweep of the Philippine history while stimulus simultaneously narrating the lives of the generation of the Samson whose personal lives intertwine with the social struggles of the nation. So because of their international appeal, his works, including his many short stories, have been published and translated into various languages. So Amando V. Hernandez, 1973. So he was born on September 13, 1903, and then he was died on May 4, May 24, rather, in 1970. So Amando V. Hernandez, a poet, he was also a playwright and novelist, is among the Filipino writers who practice committed art. In his view, the function of the writers is to act and to consent to conscience of society and to affirm the greatness of the human spirit in the face of in 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 iniquity and oppression. Hernandez's contribution to the development of Tagalog prose inconsiderable. He stripped Tagalog of its ornate character and wrote in prose closer to the colloquial than the official style permitted. His novel, Mga Ibong Mandaragit, first written by Hernandez while in prison, in the first Filipino's social political novel that exposed the ill of the society as evident of the agrarian problems of the 19 of the 15 years of the 50 years. So Hernandez, other works include Bayang Malaya, Isang Dipang Langit, Luha ng Buaya, and Amado V. Hernandez, Tula and Tudling, Tatipuna ng Mga Nalathalang Tula, 1921-1970, langaw ng isang basong gatas at iba pang kwento ni Amando V. Hernandez, mga magkabilang mukha sa isang bagol at isang pangakda ni Amando V. Hernandez. Now, let's proceed to Na Lazaro Francisco, the year 2029. So, he was born on February 22 to 89, uh, February 22, 1898 and then died on June 17, 18, 1918. So, prize winning writer Lazaro A. Francisco developed the social realist tradition in the Philippine fiction. His 11 novels were now acknowledged classic of Philippine literature, embodies the author's commitment of nationalism. Amadeus Maguerrero wrote Francisco championed the cost of the, com the, co the cost of the common man specifically the oppressed peasant. His novels expose the evils of the tenancy system, the exploitation of farmers by unscrupulous landlords and foreign domination. Chedora Valencia also observed, his pen dignifies the Filipino and accents all the facetives about the Filipino way of life. His writing have contributed much to the fermentation of the Filipino nationalism. Literary historian and critic Benvenido Lombera also wrote when the history of the Filipino novel is written, Francisco is likely to occupy the imminent place in it. Already in Tagalog literature, he ranks among the finest novelists since the beginning of the 20th, 20th century. In addition to the depth, hand, and characterization, Francisco has a so called pro style responsive to the sub. Substance, sub rather, no ones of ideas and the sternest stop of passion. Francisco gained prominence as a writer not only for his social conscience, cons conscience but also for his masterful handling of the Tagalog language as a support pro style with his. Literary output in Tagalog, he contributed to the enrichment of the Filipino language and literature for which he is a touch advocate 
he put up an arm to his advocacy of the Tagalog as a national language by establishing the Kapitiran, Kapatiran rather ng Alagad ng Wikang Pilipino in the year 1958. His repetition as the master of Tagalog novel is backed up by numerous awards he received for his meritorious novels in particular and of his contribution to Philippine literature and culture in general. In general, his masterpiece novels, Ama, Bayang, Nagpatiwakal, Maganda Pa Ang Daigdig, Andaluyong, affirm his imminent place in Philippine literature. In 1997, he was honored by the University of the Philippine with a special convocation where he was cited as the foremost Filipino novelist of his generation and champion of the Filipino writer's struggle for national identity. And then we have also Alejandro Rosas in 2003. So he was born on July 13, 1924 and then died in May 23, 2011. So, it says here, you cannot be a great writer first. You have to be a good person. Alejandro Rosas is a short story writer and easiest and considered as the country's best writer of comic short story. He is known for his widely anthologized My Brother, Peculiar Chicken. In his in innumerable newspaper columns, he, wa he, wa he has always focused on the neglected aspect of the Filipino cultural heritage. His work have been published in various international magazines and they received national and international awards. Ever, ever the champion of the Filipino culture, Rosas brought to public attention the aesthetic of the country fiestas. He was instrumental in popularizing several local fiestas, notably Moriones and the anti and at the at the hand, he personally led the campaign to change the country Independence Day from July 4 to June 12, and caused the change of language from English to Filipino in country stamps, currency, and passports, and recovered Jose Rizal's manuscript when they were stolen from the National Arch Archive. His unfinishing love of country lead him to become a guerrilla during the Second World War, to defy martial law, and to found the major opposition partly under the dictatorship. His work have been published in various international magazines and received numerous national and international awards, including several decorations from various governments. So we have here the last one, Carlos P. Romulo, 1882. So he was born on January 14, 1899, and then he was died on December 15, 1985. So Carlos P. Romulo, multifaceted career span, 50 years of public service as educator, soldier, university president, journalist, and diplomat. So as we observed, the ba? Lahat sila merong kanya-kanyang titulo. Merong educators, educator, educator rather, soldier, university president. Lahat sila merong nasulat, merong magagandang nasulat para sa ating para sa ating bansa. So it is a common knowledge that he was the first Asian president of United Nations General Assembly. Then Philippine ambassador to Washington and later Minister of Foreign Affairs. Essentially, though, Romulo was a very much into writing. So he was a reporter at the age of 16. Wow! So he was, I know, he was became a reporter at the age of 16. And then a newspaper editor by the by the age of 20. So, di ba? Napaka amazing. So, kung iisipin natin, if ilalagay natin yung sarili natin sa kanya. Kaya-kaya natin gawin ito at the age of 16 and 20. Kaya kaya natin maging reporter or magiging newspaper ed editor. So, 
sa tingin natin or kung iisipin natin ang dami nilang nagawa so di ba unlike kung iisipin natin mas mas maraming tayong gamit ngayon mas maraming mga gadgets na pwede natin gamitin ngayon unlike before kumpara sa kanila kasi di ba noon wala pang mga technology kung mayroon man pero hindi marami sulat sulat lang sila ng sulat but nakaka-admire, nakaka-inspire yung mga ginagawa nila. ba diba? Para sa ating bansa. Nagagawa nila ang mga bagay na ma- ng tama. Nagagawa nilang magsulat kung ano yung tutuo. But, hindi ko naman sinasabi na ngayon sa, sa, sa generation natin ngayon is walang nagagawa tayo. But, mas ano lang talaga, mas napakanggagandang balikan lang talaga ang panahon nila kasi ang daming magagandang nangyari ngayon because maybe siguro because of advancement of technology kasi ngayon um, sasabihin na lang natin kapag mayroong pa- 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 ipapagawa tayo o ipapagawa sa atin ay bukas ko na lang to gagawin kasi isang piko lang to sa google lalabas na yung sagot so ganyan tayo eh but not all meron pa rin taong nagsusulat ng ano mga poems mga ganon ng mga mga non-fiction, yung mga totoong story talaga, o kung ano yung mga nangyayari sa atin ngayon at bihira na lang siguro, I think unlike before na ang dami, halos-halos lahat kung ano kung iisipin natin, wow ganun sila noon and let's continue and the publisher at the age of 32 So, Romulo, he was only the Asian to the win America's convicted, convicted rather, Pulitzer Prize in journalism for a series of articles predicting the outbreak of the World War II. Romulo, in all, wrote and published 18 books and range of literary works which included the United Novel, A Walk with Heroes, Autobiography, I Saw the Fall, of the Philippine Mother America I see the Philippine Rice wartime memoirs so his other books include his memoirs of his many years affi- affi- affiliations with United Nations in uh, 40 years the third world soldier soldier at the United States and the Philippine president his oral history of his experiences serving all the Philippine president So, yun po si Carlos P. Romulo. So, that's all. So, sila po yung mga authors, mga let- literary, uh, mga authors to the Philippine literature. So, any questions, clarifications? So, kung wala na po kayong tanong, if you don't have any questions, kindly please go or open your learning path for your activity. And don't forget to answer your... Um, your activity or your test. So, yun po. Maraming salamat. And... Goodbye and thank you. God bless you all. So, see you next week.